one here with another episode of Modern Mike Forge, and today I'm going to show you how to create your own custom grenade. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, um, what do I want to do? Let's go put the item class. I'm going to type. Oh, I've already typed it because I'm actually the developer today. But we'll probably it's static item grenade. I just switched to the test of this time and I thought I'd throw it. So I'm how to do it. Okay, so public static item top grenade. So I'm going to set top grenade equal the new tot grenade dot set local type name tot grenade dot set creative tab dm creative tabs dot put combat and then we do dot set texture name strings dot mod id plus colon tot grenade because I want to create a um, texture save it. Then what we need to do we actually need to create a class to grenade in it. And it's just going to extend item like so. So I'm import that and I don't make the item. And I'm gonna go and type public item stack. I spot item stack wrong. Public item stack on item right click item stack item stack comma world world comma and player player so so that's the three clamps we're going to take so we'll import it and by the way, obviously has to return a statement because we can't return it to you yet, so we're just all gonna do is might as well return it to you. So I'm gonna go and go if our player oh whoops our player dot capabilities dot in creative mode. So basically we're saying if he's if he's not in creative mode, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna subtract whatever is inside of his input, so which will be item stack dot stack size. Okay. I'll put that in in the background again. Okay. Oh, be right back. <laughs> that one looking still, sorry about that. Okay, I just literally just woke up man. I just got this bit. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna type world dot play sound play sound at N6, so it's like let's be into spawning, okay? Because obviously we're gonna have to create an entity for this because it's actually gonna leave our hand and not be an actual item in our inventory, it's gonna have to be something that's something separate, separate sort of variable inside of the world, so it has to be an entity. So let's do the player for the first one. He's going to ask for an entity. So the entity for our player. So he's going to play the, uh, the, the uh, sound of our player. Okay. And then we actually need to get a, a, a sound. So like you see, if you actually go to um, the resources folder, or resources folder, into uh, the clips and where is it now? Assets. Sound. Uh, I can't find it now, but. Um, we could have anything, so we could have a oh, random. So if we go look in here, it's gonna be random dot, and we could use bow as it is. Random bow dot. Or we could do e or fizz. I think we'll do fizz. So we'll do random dot fizz. So we'll follow up on that. That's we're not gonna do custom sounds just yet. Okay. Then the next one, um, you'll see. Oops. Okay. Does this allow me to sell something? 
Count Frey will be doing some lame magic there. No. Sonic Sound. And the volume. Okay, so this one. No, this was how loud it is. Okay, so we set this up and I'll just something like. So this is gonna be the how loud so we can set up right now. 0.7F, so it's pretty loud. Very close to the maximum, which is 1 by the looks of it. Then the next parameter is frequency of pitch. It's also loud. I don't know how it's better now. 0.8F. Ten. Okay, we're still, still going to error because we haven't prepared anything yet, but we will do in a minute. I'm going to go if, um, if, um, what was it now? If will dot is remote. So if it, is, if it isn't remote, because we've obviously got that exclamation mark there. So if it isn't remote, then we want you to spawn an entity. Spawn an entity in the world. And this entity will be new entity grenade. Okay, new entity grenade. And then we'll have um, for our first one world. And then player. So it's going to spawn in the world at the location of the player. That's basically what I'm saying. Okay, so now we need to actually create this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our entity class okay so make sure you've already got this class and I've still got this one here and I haven't okay make sure you've got this class if you don't there will be a link or annotation on the screen right now the link will also be in the description below of how to create this actual class okay so it will teach you how to create this class if you go and watch that video okay so what we're gonna do I'm gonna type create entity entity grenade dot class Let's rename the entity which we took grenade comma and then we need some color codes so i'm going to open up this looking at my oh <laughs> i was caught i was um, buying some code for this my google google book myself so google also google how long this pick is that's probably well out by now but oh well okay so if we go to google and then go to colorpicker.com Let's choose a colour for this, so I think we'll go for the darkest green. Um, this spell is going to be the colour of the entity egg. So we'll go 0x, that goes for our main colour. Um, what's the colour? Yeah. I'm sorry about um. Yeah, the reason we're actually adding this egg is in case this, well it's not really required, but obviously it's out. Uh, the way we wrote, wrote the class it actually requires this but it could be useful for things like um, I don't know moderators perceptively want to like shoot a grenade out of a dispenser or something like that on, on a custom map if you actually ever create that don't see why they would but it's there if anyone would use it okay so we're going to create the class entity grenade we're going to hit finish basically this is going to extend entity throw so it's going to be able to right click something and it's going to throw. So it's going to ask us to add constructors. So it's going to add constructor world. Also, we're going to add another constructor, which would be public anti grenade. Grenade. World. World. living base which was another one because that's what we need to actually be able to access it inside of our um, top grenade because we have two parameters you can see and it's living base and C I've called it empty empty this doesn't work it's empty living base and C open base and we're going to super world So, I thought I'd see living base wrong, I know. What's going on? I can't spell still. So, we're going to add an unimplemented method, so it will be on impact. And inside of here, 
we're going to actually write a few things in there. So we're going to have to create a for loop. Okay. And what this for loop is going to do is basically just perform a bunch of, uh, a couple parts for us. So this will make it look a bit cool. So we can go to for integer i, which is equal to zero. I is less than, I don't know, 10. As long as i is less than 10, <laughs> we'll just keep plus 7 i. <coughs> this will actually spawn 11, I think, is it? Yeah, this will spawn 11 particles. So we're just going to go 1, 2, 3, yeah, 11 particles. This will just spawn or something like that, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember what to figure out right now. So we're just going to go this dot world object, and then we're going to spawn particle. The particle is going to be string, so we can go for, I don't know, let's look at some particle effects, which we can find inside of the fill, temp, recon source, next, Minecraft. Where would we find it? Particle? I'll be right, that was I found it. Okay, and I'm back, I actually found, um, <laughs> I don't have to go and Google it because I can actually find it inside of the Minecraft page. But um, yeah, you see we've actually got um, all the particles here. So we just go to this link here. There's also the links in the description or the annotation on the screen. And yeah, so we've got these types of particle names. Okay, so let's choose one. I quite like the idea of flame. Having lots of flame. So add the particle flame. Then the next parameter is um, the actual positions of the particle spawning so it's going to be this dot pos so it's going to be x i assume dot position y next and then this should be position c because uh, that's how coordinates work in 3d the uh, 3d coordinates work in minecraft okay so if x goes to spawn particle again We've got another, is it three in the end? Yep. So we've got these ones here, and these mean the velocity, I assume. Okay, so that's how fast they're moving. So we'll set it to, I don't know, to one, 0.9f, why not? For each of them, we'll set it to. I don't know what sort of effect that'll give it, but it'll kind of look kind of cool, I assume. Okay, so then we're going to go down again, and we're going to go if this dot world object is remote is not remote basically then continue we're going to set this entity to dead so this entity will then die once it's on impact so it won't, like, won't, won't just stay there because once, once it's built it once it's blown up so we're going to go if this dot world object dot is remote I am, I'm aware I'm writing this in one line. I just need to move it down. I forgot. So if it's not remote, it's just going to check that it's the world object is still is still remote. It still isn't remote, sorry. And if it's still not remote, then we want to create this exposure. So we're going to go world object dot create explosion. And there we go. So we'll have to cast this first one to an entity because it's not actually an entity because uh, we're actually just going to go to entity. Well, I'm just going to put this as null because well we've got no entity to uh, create the explosion at. So we're going to import entity from that demand for entity. Okay, we're going to go to uh, we want this created to that position x. Same with y and z. Okay, and then we've got two more. So if we actually go to create explosion, look at this. We've got a float and a boolean. Okay, so lock and strength. So we're going to set to now. We'll set to 4.5f, which is a pretty strong explosion. So that. I think that goes as a radius of four blocks or something like that, or maybe I can't remember. I can't remember what, what it's going to stand for as the strength, but um, because I can't actually find a place where I've never really found a place where I can find the strength of it. Okay, 
And the last one I've made is, well, I'm not explaining here, so I'm just going to assume that it means it's well, so I'm going to put true. That's that. Okay, so believe it or not, we've just created it. But now, we need to also import empty grenade in here. Um, we, oh, we need to return some as well. So we're going to return an empty stack. Okay, but now we actually need to render the item. Okay, so what we can do is there's two ways we can render this. You can either render it with a custom model, or we could render it with a, um, with a custom model, or we could just render it as an item like a snowball. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do both. Okay, so what we're gonna, what we're going to do in here is we're going to go rendering registry dot register NC rendering handler NC process limit NC grenade grenade dot class then the render is going to be new render snowball because uh, we've already got a class that's, uh, a class that's integrated with the job, job for us and then we're going to type the item we want it to be which will be tm item dot put grenade so we're going to import to empty grenade and believe it or not that's how you render it so if we actually go into the game right now I want to actually demonstrate the, how, how to program it like uh, to prove that this works then um, I'll show you also how to okay we'll just create a new world you know we won't because I forgot to do one more thing as well. We need to go to TM item again. And oh, we've already already registered it. So we've registered the item with put grenade. We took, I forget all the device names and stuff. Yeah. We also need to register the entity which we've done, but we're also going to have to add names to this. So if we go to um, the lang file. We need to go item dot touch grenade dot name it's gonna be equal to tutorial grenade. Okay, and then we need to go entity dot touch grenade is it? And to grenade dot name. Oh, it's going to be equal to tutorial grenade as well, like so. And I do believe that is everything now. Uh huh. Okay, we're going to go with that and see how it works. Okay, so we're going to run the game. We're going to put Minecraft into full screen. I'm going to create a new world because I don't know why that won't let me load up that. I forgot to sort of untie the block or something. Oh well. So create a new creative world. So it loads up obviously. Um, okay, we're gonna spawn the chunks around us. So let's open up our second world to place this in tab nest. And it's not there. Reason being, I don't know. We shall go take a look at what's up. Okay, I forgot that was up. Oh, my bad, it was actually there the whole time. What's it called? Yeah, it was actually, I looked in mist, but it was in combat. <laughs> Suddenly, okay, so we've got a pretty bad um, texture for my grenade, but nonetheless, it's a texture, so we actually throw this. Throw something like that. You get the flame effects of actually getting close. Don't know. We got to kind of get into it. There we are, I saw that flame effect there. So the velocity was a bad idea to add, apparently. So we probably should have left it in the air. But not like it adds. And those, um, and those uh, other explosions just come because it's an explosion, which is crazy. Uh, in the world, it's all kinds of tremendous impactful. So you see the flames there still? I don't really like this sound. What, what sound was it again? It was. It's a grenade, small type of the sound. I don't really like random fizz. 
<coughs> so I might go for a different one. Um, at least part four fets. But oh yeah, nonetheless, okay, so it's, it works. So it works. Slow it. Slow it. Put the live rate on. Put the live rate here. Okay. Uh, so guys, I figured the tutorial was getting long enough already, so I guess we're gonna save um, the uh, s uh, the custom model for another episode. So thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for watching it along. And I'll see you guys when I teach you how to render the model onto the custom model. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.